there was a time when I think Sergey Sergey and, and Chakra were making making a lot of quick draws and then as soon as as soon as Magnus said something they stopped making draws and Shaq just started beating his ass down basically so all right Carlson on Kariakin these type of attitudes can't be accepted Magnus Carlson has broken his silence and weighed in on Fide's ban of Sergey Karyakin for the first time. The world champion thinks the controversial Russian wants to become a martyr, says he strongly disagrees with his Russian rival, but is unsure whether it was correct to ban him from chess competitions and strip him of a spot in the candidates. Okay, let's keep going. What do we have here? For former world championship challenger Sergey Karyakin was banned from chess for six months by Fide on March 21st after a series of statements strongly supporting Vladimir Putin and the Russian invasion in Ukraine. The support has led to condemnation from enraged chess fans all over the world. Several leading tournament organizers also said that the current world number 17 is no longer welcome in their tournaments. The ban means the Russian is stripped of his spot in the, in the prestigious candidates tournament set to take place in Madrid from June 16th to July 7th, where the winner qualifies for a world championship match in 2023. In a new interview with Norwegian newspaper VG, reigning world champion Magnus Carlsen has weighed in on the ban for the first time. A lot of Russians who previously supported Putin openly or did not say anything about it chose to turn around and are now saying that Putin went too far. Karyakin has chosen the other way. He has increased his support for Putin. This type of attitude cannot be accepted. All right, so let's keep going. Okay. Okay. Despite strongly criticizing Karyakin's statements, the world champion is not sure whether banning him is the way to go. It's difficult to assess because it's, it's a completely new situation. There are no parallels in history. Obviously, I don't agree with Karyakin in anything. <laughs> but is it correct to ban people for opinions we don't tolerate? I am not sure. It's possible it pays off in a in a difficult time, but it also sets some precedents for what can come later. Yeah, I mean, this is this is sort of what I was saying, too. This is exactly what I was saying. Carlson suggests that banning banning his 2016 World Championship match opponent will lead to him becoming a martyr. Is it good that we give him what he wants? He wants to become a martyr for the tyranny of sanctions by the West. Now he can tell that story back home and it goes straight home in Russia. We are certainly helping him with that. We give him what he wants. I don't know if that's good or bad. I am not sure. All right. Yeah, so I mean, I think, um, I mean, I, I think that objectively, this is definitely what is a martyr? It's someone who is basically gets memorialized for stand for for basically for a position or, you know, whatever they did in their life. It's someone who sacrificed themselves for the greater good. Not a bad point. I actually kind of I, I think Sergey is kind of right, though. He, he's definitely right that at a certain point. It's true that that Sergey has just decided he's going to double down on everything, and that's that. Absolutely. Yeah, it's for the sacrifice. That, that exactly. Sorry. Yeah, I didn't clarify that perfectly. Okay. Carlson says he is not surprised by Karyak and doubling down on his stance, considering the amount of opposition he gets. Asked whether he thinks Karyak and can ever come back into chess internationally, he says, "I doubt it." Yeah, I generally agree with that too. Okay, so let's keep going. All right, here we go. Carlson is not the only top player who commented on Karyakin's ban last week. Several players spoke about the ban during the FIDE Grand Prix last week. One of them was the outspoken Russian fan favorite Daniil Dubov, known as a strong critic of Putin, Putin's regime, who said he thinks Karyakin would be a very interesting subject for a scientist. Oh man, that's um, wow, that's uh, that's uh, that, that's that's pretty harsh. That is pretty harsh um i'm not <laughs> that is really really <laughs> brutal okay carlson's world championship helper gave his thoughts to german magazine der spiegel where he also spoke about how sanctions affect russia and whether russian players should be banned from sports on karyakin's praise of putin after the invasion dubov says it was a big story for chess it was shameful but in terms of russia as a whole i don't think karyakin is that much of a help to putin I'm pretty sure Karyakin is doing this mainly for his own benefit to pursue a political career. All right. Okay. Asked how well he knows Karyakin, the 25-year-old says, We were never friends. There were always tensions. It started with the Crimea, on which we had very different opinions. But, and this is strange, when you talk to him privately, he is very nice. I also know a lot of private stories about him doing good things and helping people. 
The man, the man I had read about in the news was a completely different person. Offline, I have yet to hear him make a political statement. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Dubov thinks it was a strange decision to ban Karyakin for six months, suggesting it should have been a longer suspension if he was found guilty in the first place. That, that is a strange decision. Phoenix Code of Ethics says that you must not damage the image of chess. He has clearly done that. If he is really guilty, his ban should be a few years. But I find it hypocritical that suddenly so many are calling for him to be punished, while more or less everybody kept silent in 2014. I see the difference, but it's obvious to me that these two things are connected. And Karyakin has never denied it as well. All right. Another reaction came from Anish Giri during the FIDE Grand Prix in Berlin. He told Dina Bellenkopf. It's a very difficult question, of course. I've heard about that. We landed in that situation because of something tragic in general. If we only look at this, I could say that it's a pretty unprecedented situation. I don't recollect, fortunately, other such cases. It's really odd that we landed in, the, in that situation on many levels. That's why it's really hard for me to understand how to treat such situations. In a court of law, you look at that. Here, I don't really know how FIDE is supposed to treat such a situation. It's a serious decision they took. And as always, in such situations, you have sides that say it's not harsh enough and sides that say it's too harsh. I don't know how I should give an opinion on this since I have never seen it before. All right, fair enough. Levon Aronian also commented, and again, I guess it's just here in, here in, the, here in the quotes. Of course, I'm a bit sad about it because I think we should try to stay away from politics. But, but I think this is not just the problem of Karyakin or the problem of Fide. This is just life. You make some statements and then there are consequences. It's normal. I believe human life is the most valuable thing in the world and we should try to protect it in any way we can. If it's possible, we should stay away from the war and not promote it. Generally, I do understand his point. I think Sergei is a very nice guy and I am sad for him. I also understand the decision. I can't say whether it's good or bad, but I think it's part of life. All right. Wesley So, on the other hand, called the whole situation very sad and was crystal clear in his condemnation of Sergei. Okay, let's keep scrolling. Here's Wesley's part. I have nothing to say against Sergey, but I think he has lost his mind in the last couple of months. He is using his platform. He is using his fame. This is not just about political opinions, but about the killing of innocent civilians and innocent Ukrainians. It's not just about politics. This is about war. Now, one funny thing is actually in this article, it's funny that they show three players and what they said, and they don't actually show what I said. So I find that actually kind of funny because I also gave I also gave a pretty, pretty general comment as well about about what I think about think about the whole situation. So I'm a little bit surprised that Chess24 chose to intentionally not put put my put mine in here, but uh, not a big deal at any rate. All right. So Karyakin, meanwhile, is expected to um, is expected to appeal the ban with the support of the Russian Chess Federation and its president Andrei Filatov. It is also likely that the case will be tried by CAS Court of Arbitration for Sports in Lausanne, but it remains unclear whether a decision will come in time before the Canada's tournament starts. Um, so, yeah, I think um, I think what I would say about in general is that I I don't really know um, I don't really know if uh, if um, if Sergey is like being pushed this way or not being pushed in this way. I mean, who knows? Because I know Levon, for example, is, has hinted at that. But in general, I think as I as I read through this, um, I actually I agree with what Magnus says. I, I mean, there's this comment that he makes right here about about he's trying to he wants to become a martyr for the tyranny of sanctions i think magnus is probably at this point 100 percent correct i suspect early on when sir when sergey tweeted my guess is that is that at, at the start he was just showing his support and then as uh, and then as people start like get, getting more and more like uh more and more sort of uh upset and obviously as they as they should be by his tweets i think that as, as that happened more and more he's like okay he decided he had the equation either he's going to like dial it back and try to try to kind of quote unquote get in the good graces of everyone or he's going to be like okay i'm going to go the exact opposite way because with because i'm going to be in russia and with the uh with the support of russians it, it, it'll be fine so that that's my general read of it i think magnus is right that at some point he made that decision after the first set of uh the first set of first set of um after the first set of, of tweets that he ha made that decision to double down. That's that's what I think it is. And, and so Magnus is right. We give him what he wants. I don't know if that's good or not. I'm not sure. I mean, who knows? I, I think time will time will tell. Putin will reward Karyak in big time. Sergey's a chess player. Let, let's be serious. Um Ser Sergey is a uh Ser Sergey is a chess player. Let's be let, let's, let's 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 be truly honest. He's a chess player. He's not he's he's not anyone super 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 famous or important. I'm just going to say that right now. Um, so he might think he is, but I, I, I don't buy that. 
So, all right, that, that's the article I want to cover. But speaking of Sergey, I did see there was also one other thing. There was apparently a tweet that I saw this morning. Um, where, where is the tweet? Yeah, I saw this tweet. Um, so let me pull this up as well. This was a uh, this was a tweet. Okay, so here let me let me change the scene. Give me one second. Um, adjust it just a little bit. Like this. It's a little bit smaller. Let me pull this up. There we go. Okay. So we have this tweet as well, which this this apparently is some tweet from this morning. I don't know the exact context of it, but I will show it anyway. So we have this tweet, which says this is from Emil Chess, of course, which says um, banned at Sergey Karyak and hits new lows, arranging a deep fake prank call to me on behalf of Ukrainian Minister of Sports, V. Gutzai. I'm not ashamed of what I said there, but the very fact that Karyak masterminds it, quoting me in Russian media after a call says it all. So I thought I thought I would um, I, I thought I would, uh, would would mention this as well. Suggested to follow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But anyway, um, pretty, pretty terrible. What can I say? Pretty, pretty terrible. Um, at any rate, I guess, I mean, I think Sergey at this point, he's just like, yeah, he's just, he's completely lost it. And that's life. So what to do? What to do, basically? Remember when Emil used to be a bad guy? Oh, I mean, there are many things I'm not thrilled by with Emil, but definitely in regards to this, it's just like, yeah, it's insane. I think Emil added something else. Um, yeah, I think, I think Emil said something more. He said something about um, that basically as soon as this happened, Sergey then went in Russian media and said something. So he needs help. I mean, I guess. Who knows? Who knows? But yeah, it's all it's all really, really bad. I said it right before time to ignore Sergey. Yeah, I generally agree. Generally agree. And that's, that's just life. That's how it goes. So all right, that's all that I want to cover on this, you guys. I don't think we have anything more to cover. Oh, yeah, we, we do have one more thing to cover as well. So Sergey, is, is this another one? Let's see, what is this? We have one more thing to cover. One more thing. We have, uh, why does nobody speak about two pre-arranged draws in the final of the Grand Prix like they do in other tournaments? Oh, I'm so mad. I'm so mad. And why, why, does no, why does nobody talk about the two two draws? Um, first things first, I'm going to say, obviously the draws were not pre-arranged because if they had been pre-arranged, we would have drawn a five move both times. I would not have actually spent time preparing for the games. So Sergey is wrong. And I will say this also. Um, Sergey, for the matter, has just flat out prearranged draws. So when you talk about prearranged draws, what that means is there's like there's an agreement before you play that you're going to make the draws. So for example, it's like, you know, let's just say Wesley and I, if we if we want to prearrange draws, what would have happened is uh I, I would have probably sent Wesley a message on, I don't know, like well, I guess he's not on social media, so I couldn't do that. But it's like I would probably go to I would go to the, go to the lobby at the Western Grand. I'd say, I would go to the reception. I'd be like, uh, "Can I can can you please call Wesley so his room?" And I'd be like, "Yo, Wesley, uh, we we gonna play or you know are we just gonna chill and then without then we're gonna play like a tiebreaker." So that's what it, that's what it would have happened, obviously, if you pre pre arrange a uh, if you pre arrange draw. Obviously, we did not pre arrange the draws. Um, we chose to be very solid, and that's life. That's how it goes. So it was not pre arranged. Whereas Sergey, for example, has done that um, flat out. I can see it at the bar. True. Yeah. True. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Wesley, Wesley's like, let's chill, bro. Exactly. Um, so this is this is just absurd, but it's just it's sad to see Sergey doing these things. And I mean, that's just how it goes, I guess, at this point. But that's life. How do I know that about Sergey? Uh, Magnus actually spoke about it in the past. Magnus spoke about it um, quite clearly. Uh, and there was a time when I think Sergey, Sergey and, and Chakra were making making a lot of quick draws. And then as soon as as soon as Magnus said something, they stopped making draws and Shaq just started beating his ass down, basically. So um, they, they were making they were making a lot of quick draws. And as soon as Magnus said something, they stopped making draws. Shaq was just crushing Sergey every time they played. So um, so that, that's just the, the obvious example that, 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 I, that, that I will give right now.